Hello peeps and welcome back to Modded Minecraft with Night Dagger. We're on episode 37 and I have let basically no time happen between the end of the last video and the beginning of this one. The reason being, we have a problem. My farm is in overdrive. I have 6800 canola seeds and that thing has been running for less than 10 minutes. So we need to do something about this. I did go ahead and wall it off with clear glass so that when I step near this thing wearing my ring, it doesn't pull the canola seeds through. It'll pull them over into this row, but when I step away, it'll eventually back off. I also did directly hook the thing up to an ME interface so that it imports directly into my system. I had one channel left on here, on my line right here, so I went ahead and used it. So this line is now capped. We're going to need to set up a grinder for that thing real fast. So I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here where I have my old grinder set up and I am going to fix this. We're going to, we're going to kidnap that grinder and repurpose it. So we are going to need a bucket. Because one nice thing about micro turbines is that you can actually pull the fuel back out of the engines using a bucket. And I don't want to waste fuel. So we're going to pull six buckets of fuel out of this micro turbine. The last 30 millibuckets we can't do anything about, so we'll just have to break it. Which we will. Get our gearbox. We're going to check that and make sure it's empty. We got that. We got our hopper. Got our grinder transfer node, and we're going to get this ender chest that I had here. Right? Right. Okay. So, we also have a hardened portable tank there of lubricant. That's probably not going to work for what we're going to need. We're going to need at least a resonance. So, we're going to get our crescent hammer. And we're going to remove this from the wall, and we're going to upgrade this tank. Because we're going to need tons and tons and tons of lubricant. So we're going to put that there. We're going to get hardened glass to surround it. To get a reinforced portable tank. And then we're going to get some endarium. I do have some more cooking up outside, so we've got plenty. And we're going to need a liquid transfer node. Alright. That's everything we're going to need for this. However, we do need to come back into our wall here. Because it's time to dismantle this system. This system worked well for what we needed it to do. It got us a good start on our ore processing. But it's just not going to cut it going forward. Uh, we need place that back in there because that is supplying something yep, that's supplying water actually I don't think that's supplying water to anything anymore is it no that line's completely pointless we're going to pull that off let's move this torch a little bit in here so it lights up better and let's go ahead and continue dismantling this we can also remove the line running underneath because we're not going to be powering the micro turbines back here anymore. See, or the gas turbines, you can see they are both completely empty. We're going to pull up these ECUs and we're going to pull up my redstone wiring that I had back here. Along with our redstone receiver. Don't need it anymore. We'll finish breaking the rest of this out. Now, we are not going to build our new system back here. I have plans going off in this direction. That's not where we're going to put it. We're actually going to put it over here. Or actually, well, maybe not. How many channels do I have left on this? One. One channel ain't going to cut it, I don't think. I could put it off of this line. 
Yeah, let's put it off of this line. So we're going to need a P2P tunnel. We'll get ourselves an ME P2P tunnel. We're going to need our memory card. We're going to need some of our Flux cabling. And we're going to need an export bus. We're also going to need to start putting some of this stuff away. Because I'm carrying way too much crap. Also, this extractor, or this button panel up here, does nothing anymore because I removed the linked module. So, we can take that off for right now. Let's head back downstairs, and we are going to put this system somewhere over here, I think. It doesn't need to be huge. I might actually just put it right behind here. And yes, I know having these things running constantly is draining power, but it's not like I'm hurting for it, so I'm not too worried about it. Where do I want to put this thing? I really should have thought about this up before I started this video. Let's go get my excavator. And for those of you who are keeping score, I am still getting forestry warnings. About the bees not playing nice. So, I don't know what's going on with it, but it's not happy. Yeah, I think we're just going to do this back here. We're not going to need a lot of room for this, and I really would like for my tank to punch through the wall. That's an ME drive. That's not going to work. So we'll run it directly under that. Inventory problems. Go figure. Alright, so we're going to put our extractor right here. Or not our extractor, our grinder. Our grinder is going to go right here. Not that way. That way. Good. We're going to need a space behind this. Because this is where the turbine's going to go. Okay. Now, how are we going to pull this off? We're going to need the micro turbine, but... Remember that the grinder has a speed requirement, a torque requirement of 128 nanometer, right? Our gas turbine puts out 1024. We need to modify this by a factor of 8, so we need an 8 to 1 gearbox. I currently have a 4 to 1 on me. That's not going to cut it. An 8 to 1 gearbox will allow me to drop its torque to the minimum required and yoink the highest amount of speed out of it. Uh, we're not going to need the diamond shafts. We don't need... Oh, I do have an 8 to 1 gearbox on me. Derp. I don't have a screwdriver on me, though. That's going to be critical. Let's go ahead and put some of this stuff away. We don't need the speed upgrades or the stack upgrade right now. We will. Sleep through the night. Go recover my transfer pipe. Grab a bite. Okay. Back up in here. We're going to put the 8 to 1 gearbox out. And we're going to put the turbine behind it. Now, this is not enough room for a turbine to work. So we're going to have to expand this a little more. I think it's got enough side-to-side -side room. I don't know if it's going to have enough overhead. And one more block back should be sufficient to give it clearance. So, that should be sufficient to get this thing running. We need a way to fuel it. 
We're going to do that by means of our ECU, just like that, with our duct running into here. Now I'm not going to use, actually, mm, I don't have a way, I don't think I have a way to transmit a redstone signal over a fluid duct. I can transmit power over a fluid duct, but I can't transmit a redstone signal. So what we may end up doing is using a wireless receiver combo. Which wouldn't be anything unusual. I mean, we've already done that. So let's just go ahead and set that up now. We're going to dig this out. It's not going to take a whole lot. We're going to need our knot gate. The knot gate we're going to put right there. We need the in to be going that way. We need the out to be going this way. Just like that. And then we're going to get our let's go ahead and get our wireless receiver back. And we may as well get that button module and our text module. We're going to put these back in here. However, we're going to set the text. It's not going to be extractor power. It's going to be lubricant production. There we go. Put that thing like that. And now we can transmit a redstone signal to this thing. This is where this is going to come out. So we are going to want to have a fuel tank is going to go there. But we need a liquid transfer node underneath this in order to be able to pipe the fuel into it. Now, one thing I'm not sure of, if I stand here, I'm pretty sure that turbine's going to try and suck me in. So I'm going to have to be careful about that. Uh, this is where we're going to be piping the lubricant out. So, on the side of that, we're going to place that. We're going to run this out here. Uh... I'm going to put that down there. We're going to set this into non-force connection mode because I don't want that connecting like that. It wouldn't hurt anything if it did, but I don't like the way it looks. So this is where our lubricant is going to come out. I'll probably eventually change that to an ender tank just because. I really should put this a little further back. Yeah, we're going to put this a little further back. I don't want this thing trying to suck me in. I don't think it actually could. But I'm not taking that risk. Gas turbines are an expensive thing to have blow up on you. And that is the end result if you get sucked into it. Sooner or later, that turbine's dead. So we're going to move this entire setup a few more blocks in. We're going to put the extractor as far back against this wall as we can. Once I actually get it into my inventory. Grinder. I keep saying extractor. I mean grinder. So, grinder there. Gearbox there. Um, I need to turn that around, don't I? and a turbine 
there. Okay, that's not right. I always forget green is output or green is input. Okay, green is input, so red needs to be facing that way. Green needs to be facing that way. Red needs to be facing that way. Okay, so now we're set up right. This gearbox needs to be set into torque mode. Or it needs to be set into speed mode. It's currently set into torque mode. So now it's set into speed mode. It's going to transmit all of the power of that gas turbine into sheer unadulterated speed and pass it onto our grinder. Off of this line right here, we're going to put our P2P tunnel. We're going to take our memory card, make sure the settings are cleared. We're going to load, or we're going to save the settings from that P2P tunnel. We're going to load it onto this one. So we've now paired these P2P tunnels. We take a look at this. On this line, I am now using f four channels for this line. One for each P2P device connected on the network. One, two, three, four. The main line is using six channels, which is for that, my charcoal plant, and all of that. All right, we're going to need underneath this our ECU. And we're just going to do the circuit right next to it. Knock gate. Redstone receiver. Red alloy wire connecting to the knock gate to give that thing power. We're good there. Actually, I need to run this underneath here, don't I? Yeah. There we go. Transfer pipe. Gives us a connection there. Transfer pipe and a liquid transfer node gives us a connection there. On top of this, we're going to do an export bus which is going to be wired into this P2P tunnel. Device is missing channel. Device is online. All right. So that's everything we need to get this thing running. OK? We just need some canola seeds in that thing in order to start pumping them in. Remember I had 6,800 canola at the beginning of this video? I now have 9,000. Insert DBZ joke here. All right, canola seeds in the export bus is gonna start pulling out canola seeds and putting them into the grinder, but it's gonna do it super, super stupidly slow. That ain't cool. We need more. However, we also have something else we have to consider. There is an export product from the grinding of canola seeds. We need an import bus. So let's get ourselves an import bus. We're going to drop down here, actually, while we're up here. You know what, let's just go ahead and get ourselves the acceleration cards we're going to need. We're going to need quite a few acceleration cards. If you take a look at the uh, tooltip here, the imports and export buses can each take four. So we're going to want a total of eight of these acceleration cards, which take advanced cards, and I know I don't have enough on hand. So we're just going to do this. We're going to take flux crystals. And we have eight. Down we go. Okay, on this side, we're going to put our import bus. I'm going to patch him in, 
which means I don't need this one. And in each one of these, we're going to put four acceleration cards. Those four acceleration cards have now flooded this thing with canola. All we need is a way to get fuel into this thing, and we need to, you know, safetify this room. I think I also need to expand this a little bit out this way in order to give the thing sufficient room to run. Uh, I'm trying to do this in a way that keeps it looking at least somewhat nice. Uh, we're going to use stone to refortify this wall. There we go. I broke my turbine. Come here. All right. Turbine in place. We should be in good condition here. I am going to want to put some hardened glass in there, or clear glass or something, and we're going to need lighting. Because I don't want mobs getting back there. Mobs getting back there would be a bad time. Let's grab a torch and some clear glass. Down we go. Up we go. And let's put our torches around in here just to make sure we're in good condition. And then we're going to wall this entire thing off with clear glass. This way I can see it operating. I can double check and see if something's wrong, but I can't get pulled in. That's what I need. All right. So now all it should take is giving some fuel to that system, right? So let's give that system some fuel. Hmm. Yoink. System is now getting fuel. Unfortunately, it's too far away for me to actually see the turbine from here, so I can't get a fuel readout from here. But, let's go ahead and kick on our extract, our gas turbine. <laughs> this transfer note cannot pull fast enough. So we need stack upgrades. At least one. We're also going to need some speed upgrades in order to keep up with it. Five should do it. By adding these upgrades to this system, you can now see exactly how fast it's burning through those canola seeds. Now we're producing lubricant at speed. Look at our canola seeds go down. Look at our canola seed husks go up. That's the side effect I was talking about, is the canola seed husks. Now, we're not done with this build yet. We can do more. We can do a lot more. Because these canola seed husks, if we take a look at them, it's not a useless byproduct. Processing these things through a centrifuge gives you 90 millibuckets of lubricant. More lubricant is not a bad thing. The sound of that gas turbine is, though. That's going to drive me nuts. Oh, and by the way, our tank is now completely full. So, there's no point in having the system running. 
Let's go back upstairs and shut it off so we're not wasting fuel. I think I am going to go ahead and switch this into an ender tank offline after I get another thing that I'm going to build this episode done. Now, we may come back and visit... You know what? We're going to come back and we're going to visit the extractor some other time, I think, because I seriously need to get some real craft on. We're going to make ourselves real craft iron tanks in order to store our lubricant. This is going to require iron plates from Railcraft. Iron plates are made in a rolling machine with four iron ingots, so we need a rolling machine. Four pistons, crafting table, and some iron. No problem except for the crafting table. Rolling machine, get. This thing, when connected to power, which I could just do it there, or I could do it right there. Hmm, how do I want to do this? How many channels do I still have on my upline? I'm pretty close to tapped out on my upline, I think. I've got six channels on the upline. I'm going to need an import bus on this. And I would like a way to automatically put iron into it. So we're not going to tap off of that line. I might actually just do this part manually for right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back upstairs if my elevator ever cooperates with me. And I'm just going to put it right there. We're going to get four stacks of iron. And we're going to put four stacks of iron in here. And, you know, I do want an import bus on that. Uh, I've already got my flux cable on me. There we go. We're now automatically importing the plates by making an acceleration card. I can speed it up a little. There we go. So we're now pulling the plates in as it goes. While that does its thing, we're going to get on to crafting the next component that we need. Let's grab some noms. All right. Um, centrifuge. The centrifuge from Rotary Craft requires 4,000 kilowatts a second with a minimum power of 16 kilowatts. Well, the faster you supply the necessary power to this thing, the faster it runs, right? It takes 16 kilowatts. Its minimum speed is 4 kilorad. Well, doesn't that mean we can just use a micro turbine on a 16 to 1 since it doesn't have a minimum required torque? That's exactly what it means. So, centrifuge has a 4x gear unit, glass pane, base panels, and steel ingots. Glass pane is no problem. Neither is the steel. Although, I need to come down here and recover all of the steel that I produced off camera. Because otherwise it is going to be a problem. We're going to need some shaft units. And we're going to need our HSLA steel gears. We're going to need two 2x gear units to get a 4x gear unit. We're going to need two base panels and four HSLA steel. Clear out what's already in here. 
gear units, steel, and glass. Gets us our centrifuge. The centrifuge, if I remember correctly, except power from the bottom. We need a good place to set this up. Well, just so happens I have a setup over here that I could use. So, um, how many channels am I using off of this line? Six. That's plenty. We can do this. So, we're going to put our centrifuge, I think. How do I want to do this? I want to put my centrifuge right here, I think. And you can see it takes power from the bottom. So we're going to need a bevel gear. Actually, I'm going to put the centrifuge up one block. Because I want to kind of try and keep things looking nice. So, yeah. Engine control unit. Micro turbine. <clears throat> need a 16 to 1 gear unit. We're going to set you into speed mode. He's in speed mode now. We need a bevel gear. Bevel gear is taking power from the south and exporting it to the up. Just like that. Now, the centrifuge. You put stuff in here, you get stuff out of here. Well, putting stuff in, that's easy. It's just an export bus, nothing we haven't done before. Once again, we're going to need some acceleration cards. And we're going to need our canola seed husks. I think I already had some on me, but it's all right. Export bus on top. Like that. Glass cable connecting into our line. Acceleration cars there, canola seed husks there. It's going to dump a crap load of canola seed husks into there. Now all we need is fuel. Pop that on there, get our bucket. Let's go ahead and give this thing about 10 buckets of fuel. We're going to let it just start spinning up right away. Uh, seven buckets of fuel for now will be good. And if we take a look at this thing, it has now hit the point where it's actually producing. This thing is not even close to up to speed yet. Wait until you see how this fast this thing runs when it's up to speed. Kind of just like the fractionation unit, when this thing hits max speed, it produces so fast it'll make your head spin. So, we are going to need a way to handle that lubricant. We're also going to need a way to handle that lubricant because we don't have any storage space whatsoever for the most part. This is where those tanks come in. You can see the heights are four, five, six, seven, or eight. The diameters are three. Uh, diameters are three, five, seven, or nine. We're going to need a couple of things. First of all, we're going to need a couple of iron tank valves. We only actually need two, but you get eight from the recipe. We're going to want some iron tank gauges, which is made with glass panes, which I don't have any of at the moment, so we'll have to make some. And again, eight of these should work. Let's put the rest of this crap away. Because we're not going to need any of that crap at the moment. I always keep my charge porter on me now just out of force of habit. I'm trying to force myself into the habit so that I never end up with, without a way home. 
Now we're going to need a bunch of these iron tank walls. And we're going to need a place to put this. Well, I'm thinking, let's put it right in the wall here. If you take a look, it says the heights can be up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can only go six high here. But if we punch a hole through here, because we can also go nine deep, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, this is the diameter that we need to chop out. Oh, nice. We're also going to want to take this one down. Why? Because we can countersink this. Okay, we're also going to want to take it up. We need to go up four. I should have done this before I countersunk it. Am I actually nine back? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'm nine back. Oh, but I'm counting that wall. Okay, yeah. So we need to knock this wall out too. Once again, I think this episode is going to run a little long. I don't mind with these episodes because I want to have my high temperature gas reactor, which is what we're aiming for here, running before the episode 40 upload. So I'm, I'm struggling to try and get this done for you guys here. All right, so we got that. We are going to need to dig one square up from here. That's going to break us through to our grass level. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That means that the ender tank for the lubricant that I'm going to have would be able to be seen from the outside. So... Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, that said, we are going to need a way to pull ridiculous amounts of fluid out of those ender tanks, like, really fast. So, oh well, we'll think about it. Actually, we're not even going to think about it. We're just going to do it. I don't want to have it exposed. We'll figure it out. If I have to countersink this one more, so be it. We're going to build our Railcraft iron tank. Now, I don't know for sure if I have enough. You know what would really help here? Builder's wand.
So much easier that is. Okay, now we just need to do the front. I'm going to do a valve. Well, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a line of tank wall right here. The center of this thing, we're going to have be iron tank gauge so that I can see inside the tank and monitor the fluid level that way. We're going to have a valve here and a valve here. One of these is going to be an input, one of these is going to be an output. And we have a formed tank which has a capacity of 10,000 buckets, which is a hell of a lot better than what we were dealing with. Let's get us some stack upgrades. Uh, we need some more gold nuggets. More stack upgrades, please. Thank you. We're going to need two ender tanks. I'm out of blaze rods. Really? I'm not going to bother firing up the blaze spawner for this. I'm just going to run out and kill a couple real quick. They still naturally spawn. If the spawner isn't powered. Back off, you little prick. Got no blaze rods for that? What a ripoff. There. Got some for that. Okay, let's torch this up. Already did. Cobblestone down. Got it. Going down. Actually, you know, I'm going to need three ender tanks, aren't I? Yeah, I need three ender tanks. So I need to go kill a couple more. Because I'm going to need one to handle the extractor. I'm going to need one, to, or the grinder, rather. Yeah, there we go. I need one to handle the grinder, one to handle the centrifuge. And then one to act as an input. We're also going to need a couple of fluid transfer nodes. Or liquid transfer nodes. We'll just go ahead and make four. I use these things frequently, so. Alright. Uh, ender tanks, that helps. Two more of you, which means one more of you. And we're going to use a yellow color code for this because, I mean, it's lubricant. Of course, we're going to use yellow. Um, we're going to use yellow and light gray. 
So, we'll put these down. Not you. You, you, and you. Your color code is going to be yellow, light gray, white. So, yellow. Light gray. White. One of you is going to go right here. You're going to have a liquid transfer node attached to your bottom. And in that liquid transfer node, you're going to have four stack upgrades because I want you to be able to pull four stacks at once. The second one of you is going to go right here with a liquid transfer node attached to the side of this. So it's going to pump the liquid out. No, not to the side of that. That's bevel gear. the side of that. <clears throat> that is going to pump the lubricant out of there into there, which goes into here. Yeah, look at that capacity. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah. Yeah, 10,000 buckets, which is very nice. Let's go ahead and pull that up you are going to get that ender tank instead. Temporarily, we're going to hijack this line. We're going to pop this resonant tank up there, set him into output mode, and he's going to get drained pretty fast in order to start filling this thing up. I'm actually going to want some more stack upgrades. What was I missing from before? The speed upgrades. So let's make a few more speed upgrades. I know I'm going to be running out of gold. So let's make a few more nuggets. Eight speed upgrades, eight stack upgrades. <clears throat> you are going to get four, and you are going to get four. Why are you not pumping lubricant into this ender tank? No, that's not what I want. Um, <clears throat> hmm. So we have a problem here. Fairly major problem. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. Man, if I could get my throat clear, that would be amazing. Please and thank you. It's easily enough fixed, we'll just drain it into there. All right. <clears throat> How to do this? Put it there, I guess. But then that's going to want to connect to that. So let's just actually move this. There's no reason that has to be there. That thing can be anywhere. We'll just put them right here. Need another piece of transfer pipe. <clears throat> 
Now, why are we not pumping into the ender tank? Excuse me for just a second. Sorry about that. I hate doing that because it makes a horrifying click. <laughs> Transfer node liquids. It was transferring perfectly fine into the resonant tank, but it's not transferring into the ender tank. This one over here transferred perfectly fine into the ender tank. So what's the deal? Try something else. Let's try using a buffer tank. That's creosote. Will this work? No, because that's non that's a non force connection node. Even now it's not working. thing is trolling me. Still nothing? Is that a visual glitch? Might have just wasted a couple of buckets of lubricant there, but I don't really care. Or is it because it's not operating? Oh, let's go turn the thing on. Just for giggles. It's because it wasn't operating. So it's working fine. Okay, by now this thing over here is drained. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and pull that off. Pop that on. We're going to set it into forced output mode and that should be able to easily keep up with <coughs> our lubricant production here it is indeed pulling out all of the lubricant as fast as this thing can make it if we come over here and turn this thing on Once this thing ramps back up into speed, it should be able to keep up with this, too. You can see we already have a visible level of lubricant in this thing. We've got 700 and some buckets. We're climbing rapidly. This is exactly what we wanted to see. The, flu the fluid level in that tank is fluctuating madly. This is what we needed, peeps. So, this is going to complete the lubricant farm build. At least for now. I may have to come back and tweak it again later. Looks like our lamp of growth is out of V over there, so we'll have to recharge that. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do that by hand. I can't think of any better way to do it. But, off camera, I'm going to start making a couple more preparations. I'm going to go ahead and finish processing the canola I've got. We'll let some start building back up again. And then, when I come back next episode, I'm going to get this 
tungsten cooked off camera. You guys have seen that before. When I come back next episode, I think we're going to set into getting the materials that we're going to need to produce the shafts that we're going to need if we're going to start dealing with the torque and the speed that you get out of a high temperature gas reactor because diamond ain't going to cut it. It's time to move up into the world of bedrock. So next episode, we're going to see what we can do about making some bedrock go away. This has been Night Dagger with episode 37 of Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger season 5. Hope you guys are enjoying the series, and I'll catch you later, peeps.